Matt Jesus on a Pilgrimage, Still Walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. I want to switch my attention uh, with you uh, a little bit to ponder this this Christ child. And uh, a book that I've just recently been reading has a little story in it, which I'll just impart a little bit. His wife called him a mad scientist. Most people knew him as Leo Offman. One day, he got a whimsical notion. He got this crazy idea in his head, which was, and Leo was an inventor, by the way, which was to solve all the world's problems by building a happiness machine. And so he closed himself off. He went down to the basement, closed himself off, and began to build a happiness machine. He ended up building an eight-foot square orange box. I mean, that's pretty, pretty big, but you had to be able to get a human being inside of it in order to make them happy. And it was located in uh, that basement in their house uh, and uh, in this imaginary town called Greentown created by the science fiction author Ray Bradbury. Now, once inside the machine, sitting in a chair enclosed by all of the orangeness of this machine, knobs and whistles and thingamabobs and buttons, the machine would show you lovely things, happy things all the best things. And Leo's wife, Lena, gets in it one day to see what all of this is about. And it showed her sunsets with her and Leo together, visions of them as young adults, dancing in Paris, though they had never been to Paris, And as you can imagine, whatever things the machine believed that Lena needed to be happy, it provided for her. Now, we stand, you and I, uh, stand upon the eve of opening a few boxes ourselves, don't we? Right? There's some boxes probably waiting for us under trees and at home. Some will appear tomorrow. And on this eve, there are a lot of hopes riding on those boxes. Uh, Gifts, uh, and I just kind of repeat my own thoughts. The only gift I really needed will be there tomorrow. The one thing I have been wanting my whole life. I don't need anything else other than this one gift. It's going to be under the tree waiting for me when I wake up tomorrow. It will be unwrapped and my life will be full. The only thing, the only thing that I really want next to the thing I want also and the other thing too. And it all waits for us somehow magically. And I love, I mean, I'm a rapper, so I've been wrapping gifts. I love the wrapping Sorry, people who want to put stuff in bags. No. Uh, You just got it from your bishop. No bags. Wrap the gift, right? Because there's something about being able to, like, open, like, the expectation, like, what is in that? And not being able to see it. You have to actually work to get inside. And all of that is great play and joy and expectation. We also have other boxes that we don't have to wait on, but we use every day. And those boxes look like this, right? And they hang on. I mean, who ever thought we would be so dependent on these things, right? And we, um, not only do we have these kind of phones that are boxes and keep our whole lives in them, but we can actually see that on our walls or in our living rooms or wherever we have the, uh, our TVs and, uh, or on our desk. And what's amazing about those boxes is 
that they can erase the blemishes of life so that we can curate and be the most beautiful people we can be when we show everybody else what a great time we're having, right? Very rarely do we use our boxes to show us crying. I'm an ugly crier. Just don't want to put it up there for people to see, right? Like, so we curate these lives, these perfect, hopeful, beautiful lives that are festooned and ni- nicely tied up for people to see what good lives we have. I have been fortunate to go to the Holy Land a couple of times, uh, and I travel with a particular uh, friend uh, who is our guide. And uh, probably within the first two days, we do something quite unique for guides in the Holy Land. We go to a site near where the prophet Amos, his hometown was. And there we climb down, like you walk up this hill and there's, you can't see anything. There's a couple of houses there, but what you, we do is we go off to the right and we climb down through this crevice in the ground and we walk into this cave this giant cave and we discover as the guide tells us right that this is where animals used to be kept several thousand years ago and that in this cave like a barn today they would have protected their animals at night because there was one opening and they could watch out. And then the guide shows us that over here is a manger. And it is a stone box made out of stone carved by hand into a giant box with the intr- you know the insides dug out. And they go on to say that this little cave, with all of its damp and dustiness, with hay in it, because farmers still put their animals in there, uh, and this stone manger, this carved, rough-hewn box for feeding livestock. And all of it being something like what we might imagine Jesus was laid in. And every time I go and I see that cave and that box, I feel like I'm in a really holy place, like I'm experiencing something that's very ancient and very old. And I imagine that the hopes that were laid upon Jesus by his parents and others too, people that he did not even know at the time, that he had not met, that he could not even fathom as a little child, all of the hope the world had that was placed on him. As we sing, right? Yes, the hopes and fears are met in thee, we say. And I wonder if you might ponder with me tonight this various, very curious thing that Christmas really isn't about the boxes that we open or even the celebration. Christmas is not about a new beginning, another attempt at another year, at the best curated life, or the most toys. It isn't about something that might have happened. And I want you to see with me that it's about this child, a very real baby that was sat in this stone box, in this manger, And that this happened many, many years ago. The present you see has already been opened. The gift has already been given. It's already been received. The reformer Martin Luther said this, I would not have you contemplate the deity of Christ, the majesty of Christ, but rather his flesh. Think about him as a child. Look upon the baby Jesus. 
Divinity may truly terrify a person. Inexpressible majesty could crush one if you were to come to it. That is why Christ took on our humanity, save for our sin, that he should not terrify us, but rather by his love and favor that he should console and confirm us. Tonight is about remembering that that gift and that birth so long ago. Yes, we know the rest of the story and our prayers and hymns even will tip our hand to the end. But tonight, I'd like us to let the beginning be the beginning. Think about that child in that manger. Ponder that this person, Jesus, was to grow and be so close and deeply connected, so filled with love to the godly, that those who gathered around him saw something, someone they had been waiting for. Lena, Leo Offman, the inventor's wife, got out of the happiness box, that great orange thing in their basement in Greentown. And she said, when the box is open and we climb out, we have to face the fact, Leo, that we grow old. There is life. There are dirty dishes. There are children to be fed. And she suggests without any question that happiness machines, this box of yours, she says, lies. It promises things that it cannot deliver upon. Perhaps from Lena we could learn a little bit that all the boxes that promise happiness cannot deliver. And what we need as people, as family and friends, as brothers and sisters, as a bishop and some parishioners and family members, siblings, co-workers and churchgoers, all the rest. What we, what we need in a complex life is actually to marvel at Jesus, who is Savior, Messiah, wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us, who was born such a long time ago in a little town called Bethlehem, and who was laid in a stone box open for the world to receive him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.